Well, hello everybody, it's me, Chaz Large, back with another Fix It video for you. And uh, on the bench today, uh, we've got uh, this uh, video recorder and a DVD player. Yes, another one. Um, they're still obviously uh, well popular. This is a Panasonic uh, DMR-EX99B. And if I show it to that camera, you can see that it's got uh, a video deck, a VHS video deck and a DVD uh, deck uh, for writing and reading. Uh, so presumably, um, as, as per the, the previous one that we did, uh, the customer is, uh, wanted to use it to transfer old tapes to DVD. Uh, so many people have still got loads of old tapes. I still have old tapes um, up in the loft which I've kept, um, wedding videos of family and stuff like that that were made on handheld cameras and, uh, and that uh, from years back. Um, and one day I will get around to uh, well actually uh, doing those conversions before the, the tape deteriorates too much. Anyway, uh, so we're going to have a look at this. The customer has complained that um, the mechanism uh, is not working. And again, if I turn that back around there, you can see that the, the actual cassette door is uh, open. Uh, and apparently he said that he tried it before, he, when, he, when, he, when he picked it up from his mother's house, uh, when he uh, tried it, he found that there was a remote control door um, inside it. Uh, he didn't provide a remote control with it, um, but um, we have ways around that if we need to have a remote control, but apparently um, this uh, is jammed. So we'll have a look at that. Uh, so let's first off, um, before we even uh, power it up, uh, as the mechanism is not in its right uh, position, let's take it apart uh, and do that, shall we? Okay, so looking into uh, the mechanism, I can't see any bits and pieces that seem to be broken off or anywhere, but that mechanism doesn't look as though it's in. It's very similar to the uh, the one we did the other day, uh, where the uh, the mechanism was um, um, very loose and had the the uh, drum motor mounted above. So um, probably of the same sort of family. Uh, this one looks a little, a little bit more complicated. So anyway, let's uh, let's see if uh, power on uh, resets it. Sometimes that, uh, that certainly does things. So we've got uh, light. It says please wait on the front panel there. Let's go there and show you that. You can see please wait is showing on the front. Now that's usually due to a, uh, a dew sensor uh, because um, if you move a video recorder from one um, environment into another you can get dew occurring on the drum and the dew sensor uh, which is usually mounted around here it's usually probably something like that little piece uh, on the top there uh, get the old camera in there. Ooh, suddenly started itself up. So the dew sensor obviously determined that uh, it was safe enough for it to start up. Well, I can't see one. There's like a little pad there, but I'm not sure if that's what it's uh, where the dew sensor is. Anyway, not to worry, it seems to have um, powered itself up. Right, and it says hello on the front now. So uh, we should be uh, back to a condition where we can um, see what's happening on the mechanism. Let's press eject. Ooh. Not a good sound. It sounds like part of the mechanism is. mechanism is this tray uh, here should be let's take that camera up uh, 
this tray here should be back towards the front and it's not there so let's just power it off because sometimes power off and then power back on forces a little quick little reset but it certainly sounds like the mechanism is out of synchronization in some way earlier on Eject, nothing happening. You can hear the hard drive spinning up 250 gig Seagate hard drive. Oh. That, that sounds like it's jammed up. It's in play mode. The, the uh, pinch roll is jammed up to the capstan. They did say you found a cassette, uh, um, a battery cover for a remote control wedged in there and I'm wondering if something else has got wedged in there or something damn so I think we're going to have to uh, take the mechanism out and have a look at what's going on with the mechanism so unplug on the top two clips and no doubt several underneath the mechanism mm, no screws no just clips then so uh, we just need uh, a good old electrical screwdriver undo one clip press that clip in there press that one in there press that one in there and it should come away Starting to. Okay. The thing to be careful with, with mechanisms like this is all the sharp edges. They don't finish off the metal work, or well, they never did. Whether they're still making mechanisms like this, I don't know. Uh, whether these things are still for sale, they might still be somewhere in the world. Um, or indeed if you've got some old ones that uh, need repairing do be careful of the, the metal work it's usually very sharp and you end up with oh there's another little bit there so front panel comes off that's going to be awkward because the front panel um, you can see there is connected via an edge connector so you can't actually do anything with it I will get any display or anything unless this is in place that makes life hard for an engineer but anyway let's have a quick look underneath the mechanism see if there's anything we can see that shouldn't be there see anything so now on here it looks like this is looks like this is the eject motor and I'm wondering if we can manually turn that and see if we get anywhere. Doesn't seem to want to do anything on its own. So I think removal of the deck is in order. So we've got one ribbon cable for the uh, for the One ribbon cable for the head motor, one ribbon cable for the arrays head and uh, the um, control and audio head, um, plug for the motor, and can we see anything else? No, everything else I think is going to be edge connectors onto there, so let's just get my little plug puller that I use to unplug that one. And the Ribbons are just zero insertion force. Not sure. 
sure enough. Ah, we've got <laughs> great. Well done, Parasite. There's an back down. There's an earth strap just here. This looks like the one motor for the whole mechanism. So we've got the loading mechanism moves across like that, which moves the arms backwards and forwards. The capstan motor, which is there. And presumably there is some means of jumping between the two states, either loading the deck or loading the, the cassette. That doesn't want to move, so it sound feels a bit like something is well and truly stuck. Right, that little lever there is the one that opens and closes the flap at the front when you put the cassette in or out. That plastic gear moves round to lift the carriage. Now, is that just in the wrong place? Has it actually jumped out of position? I'm wondering if that's the case. Because he said that if something was, if that. Um, that remote control battery cover had been in there and then somebody put a cassette in <clears throat> that could have been strong enough to jam the mechanism and it cogs when jump because they're only plastic so it's possible extremely possible that that's the case so what we'll do we'll just get the rest of the oops, camera for a minute. get the rest of the mechanism out of the way for a minute So I think what I would be inclined to do, because I can't see any, I can't see anything that's jumped out of position. I can't turn this motor one way or the other. It's it's not rock solid, but it's it's binding, and that would tend to indicate that um, something is in the wrong place. Hello, that looks like heat sink compound. Is that grease? Heat sink compound or mm, yeah. Let's get a bit of tissue. Spread that anywhere. So if the carriage, which is the most likely part that's jammed, is the cause of the problem, then release removing and releasing that could allow it to work so looking at this carriage assembly we've got two screws one here and one here and then two engaging lugs one there and presumably one down there so if we remove those two screws Now if 
theory is correct, yeah, one side of that is definitely lifting up, the other side isn't. Is that because it's engaged? It needs to, ah, there we go. So we've released that back to that position. I wonder if that was sufficient enough to do it. You see it's, it's loaded up so I think I'd be inclined to take that mechanism off and then have a little look and see if there's anything else. Doesn't appear to be anything loose or broken but it's loaded up, it's in the loaded position so that's why we couldn't eject it. Definitely a jumping cog. That black, look, that black cog there is moving. That doesn't look right to me. That does not look right to me. It may be. Cogs don't normally float like that. Cog wheels don't normally float. That feels like that should be engaged with that all the time. So I think we've got a damaged mechanism here. I think something has broken here. That's what it looks like to me. Right, so. As we're going to need to work on this upside down, I think for safety's sake I'll remove the head drum and the head off of it so that I can work on it. I think I'll remove that ribbon cable and that ribbon cable for now. Goes onto the mechanism. Yeah, I think for safety's sake, rather than the, run the risk of damaging the head, and there's already a mark on the head, it might have been me touching it, it's a little bit of grease. So I think for safety's sake, we will take the head off. favourite bent one. It's the same size. Look at that. Gently leave that across to it. Yeah, that released it. Safely remove the drum from the deck. Right, so now the only thing we need to be careful of is the lower drum. Oh, there's the iron key. I knew I'd find it. So, looking at this mechanism, I think. The way to get at this bit is we've got a plastic gear here and another plastic gear assembly here and they're both held in place with these sneaky little plastic spring clips. I think I can focus that and show you.
they're like a plastic split washer so if you get a nice little flat screwdriver you can find where the split is put your screwdriver into the split and just gently twist it just have to make sure you've got your finger on top of it because as you twist it it has a tendency to act like a tiddlywink and go flying off there it is there's one pop that safely in that little box and that should remove that gear which it does similarly for this one Should be able to pull that gear off. Like so, quick look at the sprockets on that. Can't see any broken ones, which is a good sign. Okay, wipe fingers, wipe tools, take the drive belt off from the capstan and the take up. Now we've got another split washer on the, this is the idler assembly for take up and the old twist mechanism is working on that one, that split washer. Get hold of it with pliers before I lose it. off there's a spring there so we'll make sure we don't lose the spring mm -hmm. now maybe the main loading gear we will have a touch more luck with Slightly bigger screwdriver this time. It's going to be a pliers job. Yeah, take that one off, pop that in there. Now it looks like, because I've never done one of these before, that the whole loading rack should pop up but this lever here is problematic can that come out we've got to take that right so that that plate there we can see there's two plastic clips either side so we should be able to just gently ease those out like so to remove the idler lever and the spring and again pop that there so now can we relieve and we release the whole gear mechanism, loading gear mechanism, which seems to be coming loose and it's just got little spigots here and there which are 
hold it in place under those right so there's the loading gear mechanism and that's for loading the, the tape arms we won't touch those they're intermeshed but this is the beastie we want to get at have we got yeah and there's the problem the center spindle of that is a metal shaft and that center shaft is actually fractured off and it's fractured off the deck not glued in there that's that's been hmm, that's been put in there by machinery not by hand can you see around the other side not easily underneath that plate there which is the um, plate that moves the pinch roller so the only way that can come off is by releasing that whole mechanism too difficult now that's a plastic clip does that just hold it yeah so that takes that top bar off there And then the pinch roller assembly should come away. Yep, obviously that's been made for servicing. That little plastic clip so you can take the pinch roller out easily. And then that lever there will, is now free to move to those that position and that will come away as well. So now we can see there's the bullum end of that bar. Okay, well, uh, it seems that uh, getting spare parts for Panasonic video recorders uh, is a no-go area. I can't get, uh, been onto Panasonic, they don't supply spare parts. They put me through to a company called ICTV, which said, yeah, we can fix it for you if you, we come and collect it and fix it and then bring it back to you. hundred odd quid, forget it, waste of time. You know, the guy I spoke to wasn't even an engineer and didn't want to know. Uh, they don't sell spare parts, they're not retail, so uh, it's pretty much down to I'm going to have to drill this out. I think that's probably the easiest thing to do is drill out this centre here if I can and then put into uh, it a piece of steel like that which I can probably get from um, various other sources that I've got and hopefully um, solder it in place. Uh, maybe even just push fit it into there if I can drill that hole out neatly. If I try pushing this out I think what I'm going to end up doing is pushing this whole plate out here. So I mean that's that I think is is two pieces of metal. Although on this side of it you can see it's just flat so it's probably an all-in-one piece. This is the remains of the pin. 
and this goes uh, um, this gear wheel sits on top of that pin now thankfully um, there's it's not held into it it's not clipped onto that so I don't have to have the pin as far as long as it actually is it sits in there uh, and the pin is normally just sort of sitting um, at the top so if I can lose a couple of millimeters by pushing this pin back into this hole here once I've drilled it out and uh, fix it in place that should be sufficient to hold it there without damaging anything else that this bottom part here is acting almost like a, a bearing if you like so that's what I intend to do so uh, I got into uh, my bits and pieces uh, my uh, equivalent of a Dremel uh, which is called a Rotomatic I bought this many years ago uh, it's a rechargeable drill driver and it comes with a complete set of bits and pieces it, it's cheap uh, the batteries don't char hold their charge anymore so I have to use it with a main uh, adapter but it does still work as you can see and uh, various uh, collets on the end here and uh, my little selection of drills so I'm going to start off uh, with a small drill just to sort of create if you like uh, a pilot hole and this is a two and a half mil uh, drill and then I'm going to open it up that one there uh, with a, th a three mil and then three and a half mil drill thankfully is exactly the right um, size diameter albeit ooh, I don't know quarter of a millimeter or so different so hopefully that should be enough and I may if necessary be able to just wiggle it slightly so I can get the pin back into the hole so uh, I'm going to have to do it all by hand holding uh, I can't really put it into a bench or anything so I've got it got the mechanism rested quite firmly so hopefully um, we can get this uh, drilled out so I'm putting the, the drill into the collet on here it's got this is always quite a nice little device it was, uh, the bearing on this was quite good so uh, and you can just press the little button down and tighten it up so it's hand tight it does tend to wobble a little bit as you can see if I does tend to wobble a little bit so what in fact actually thinking about it now I think what I might do is I might just because that's got like a bit of a lump on top I might just actually get a little grinder on there first and grind that down flat so I, I'm not trying to drill into the top of a pyramid as it were Okay, so we've taken that, made that nice and smooth. Let's see if we can penetrate the middle of that with a drill. Now I'm going to have to move the camera right out of the way because I can't have the camera in that place. Make sure we're firm. I can actually do a little bit more light on there because I'm just in my own shadow. I'm getting there. Although it's a bit off centre. down probably about one and a half millimeters from what I can see a bit difficult to actually measure it 
something like that maybe enough maybe enough so really I think I would like to go down a little bit further so I'm gonna keep going Right, well, uh, spending quite a bit of time with the, my little rotomatic, I was getting a little bit, little bit, little bit deeper and, and the hole wasn't quite big enough. I thought, let's go for the big, big beastie. So I got out the old uh, hand drill and drilled through uh, with that same drill size and then opened it up to two and a half mil. And as you can see, we are now all the way through uh, leaving the mounting uh, bit still there and the pin will now quite happily sit inside there albeit fractionally loose but I'm going to arrow dike that in and hopefully that should be enough for that pin to be held in place uh, rock solid when the arrow dike dries tomorrow so now i've got to do is knock up a little bit of aerodite pop that in there and hopefully bob's your uncle so. well sadly the aerodite repair failed um put the um spindle in aerodite it in place left it to set for 24 hours um it felt fairly secure um put it all back together got the alignment right ran the motor ping, and it fell out so uh, a rapid rethink and basically uh, a bit of micro welding is decided uh, welding soldering if you like um, so uh, that's what we're going to continue with um, clearing out the hole um, putting the uh, some solder into the hole and making sure it's nice and uh, tight and then um, putting the pin in and heating it up uh, with a hot uh, flame tool that I've got and hopefully uh, that should be uh, a resolve for this fixing it uh, permanently in place. Do 
using the Phillips head of this old screwdriver here just to scrape the inside of this. The good thing is that this metal pin is taking solder. If the solder that's stuck to it is now coming off with solder wick. I mean, you can't see what I'm doing here, but that's unfortunate. We can see the pin is actually taking solder. So I think if I can tin the whole of this pin with ordinary solder, to tin the bottom of the pin like so and then the other thing I might see if I can do and I don't know whether this sort of will do it so much metal work here it's not really going to stick just want to see if this will take any solder Put it in there. Oh, 
Okay, as things have now cooled down, I'm going to uh, try again to use the hot flame part of this tool uh, to melt the solder that I've put into this um, spigot hole and put the spigot into it and see if I can mount it that way. Let's hope that this will work. have a small flame and the tip of that is the hottest point so hopefully that will concentrate the heat onto the solder I've put in there heating up. Let's get the spigot in there as well so that heats up. And yes. As expected, it's dropping all the way through. Well, that might be enough to hold it in place. Let's just hope that it hasn't dropped too far through. Yeah, we've got a blob of solder hanging out the bottom end. Right. Fingers crossed again. Right, things have moved on, it's cooled down. Let's uh, give it a bit of a clean off. <coughs> Stuff on my fingers, let's pop that on there and see if it uh, fits. fits and it turns nicely feels solid. So one side of it seems to be okay. Now obviously we need to now take that excess glue off of there. I'm not going to use a soldering iron because I don't want to risk the spigot dropping off. And as it's soft solder we should be able to just slice it off as much as possible but as I suspected we got to the part of the spigot that dropped a bit too far down I suspect What I might do is just get my little, this might be the quickest and easiest way to get rid of that.
See if this plate will fit over there and still turn. Not quite. It still needs a little bit to go. Not much, but a little bit to go. We have done that. Right. That deserves a cup of tea or a coffee. Right. Okay, a bit of a tidy up and we're going to apply some lubrication to this plate. Lubricating wiper sticks. Next to useless, but they will do the job for this. A little coat of molly coat grease around there. And there, because it's got a turn around there. Put that back on there. Just put a little bit on there as well.
Safari so goody. I think we can now chance putting the motor on here and seeing how it will drive. Right, that's back to front. And I'll just drop that down to five volts, four and a half volts. Don't want to drive it. Too hard, just in case. Right, that's just that mechanism loading. Tape loading. Tape unloading. Mechanism unloading. Set eject. Ooh, job seems to be a good one. Ha! There can be a lot of editing in this tape. I just hope hope it holds out, but as the original, as the customer said, the problem was that he found something jammed inside it. So I think, so long as we don't get any little fingers poking stuff into this like they shouldn't, we should be okay. Now I'm just noticing a little bit of grease on that cast and just get rid of that. Many of these poles, loading poles. Just in case I accidentally touch them. Right, head drum. drive belt back on the pulley let's twist it in a minute and 
twist it. And then we put the set housing, we've got two little lugs there and there. So here we are back with uh, this mechanism uh, from this Panasonic uh, uh, video recorder DMR um, uh, EX99V having uh, replaced the uh, spindle stud um, axle I don't know pivot um, spigot that's what I've called it uh, which sits inside this gear uh, and is mounted on the plates and we saw it earlier and I've reassembled it um, several times uh, but the difficulty was getting the timing right and I had to download a, a manual um, pay a considerable price for it only to find that it didn't have any indication as to how to set up the uh, the timing of it um, but it did show these holes in relationship to a hole underneath uh, and I've used that uh, for timing purposes and also on the uh, cassette end uh, when you're connecting the cassette gear uh, to the uh, loading mechanism you can't quite actually see it but there right on the tip of uh, here there's like a little uh, point and that points to a little groove um, in the uh, bottom edge of the um, slider there so having done all that uh, I then decided to uh, give it a whirl with uh, cranking it through manually managed to get it to crank through manually uh, then decided to put some power on it um, had to turn the, the voltage up on, on the motor, uh, not knowing exactly what the voltage of the motor is, um, because a lower voltage it just needed, it just didn't have the torque to drive the mechanism through. Um, but so about seven and a half volts uh, seemed to be about right. So if we uh, now just push it through as though it's loading the cassette as normal, and it goes all the way through the mechanism and loads up happily. And then reverse the motor, it loads and ejects. So I think we have a good fix. All we've got to do now is put it back into the mechanism. I just want to make sure that the head is nice and clean, uh, head drum is nice and clean uh, before I do that. Clean off any other surfaces uh, just in case I've got uh, greasy fingers of them uh, when I was working on that the other day. Uh, so and then we should be back to um, fully working condition and we'll be able to test it out uh, more fully. So we'll put that to one side. Bring back the mechanism. But the one thing I need to make sure of is that the system switch is in the right place. This is the switch that tells the process, um, the mechanism, where it is. thing is, what you have to do is when you put the deck in, you have to make sure that the hole, the appropriate hole for this one, which is that uh, slot there, is in the right place. And that's where the manual is required for that alignment. So let's uh, just call that up. Right, so we've got the service manual, let's bring that up and we can see there that the uh, mechanism, and uh, it says on here this is the, the procedure for uh, removing the cassette deck and putting it back in, uh, we need to set the cassette mechanism to the eject position which is what we've got it at um, and we need to set the uh, cam switch there uh, to the arrow mark and uh, if I uh, remove that now we can see that that's what I've done so there's the cam switch there in the arrow mark position uh, so we should be good to go to put the cassette deck back in place now we just need to make sure that we keep those ribbon cables these are just temporarily removed and 
and we almost drop the mechanism. We don't want to do that, do we? So let's get that back in there. Now we've got a ribbon cable that we need to uh, connect up for the um, head, which goes there. So, and the other one which we have, which is for the um, head drum motor, which is there. So let's just get this in there before. Let's see if we can put that in afterwards. Yeah, it's zero insertion force, so yes, it will go in. I was a little bit worried that I might have to take that out. But there we are. So that connects into there, so we can slot that in. Oh, it feels like it's dropped straight into position, which is good. Right, I've put the deck into position and I've put the ribbon cables back in the right place. So this is the ribbon cable for the head drum motor, the ribbon cable for the uh, uh, audio and uh, tracking control head. So those two are in the right place. Uh, we just need to refit the uh, little earthing screw on this uh, cable here. Let's just move the camera out of the way a minute. Pushes that down a bit there, and then we've got the screws. These are flanged screws um, there, which uh, hold the deck in place. So we've got we can get the front panel, and the front panel, if you remember. I pointed out has got this uh, edge connector on here um, so without this panel being in place we won't be able to do anything with it uh, but also uh, if you're doing video records you just need to make sure that the uh, the flap there's usually a little uh, piece of the plastic of the flap here which engages with this little lifter here at the front of the mechanism so you need to make sure that that's above that as you put it in um, otherwise you won't get the um, the flap lifting up when you go to uh, to put a tape in. It will just so. think we need to put the rest of the screws in just yet until we test it at least test it with a cassette and I think that deserves a drink this is where when we put it all back together and we plug it in and suddenly it all goes screwy we don't want that do we we don't want screwy right mains application time There we go. Please wait. I heard heard the hard drive give a little chunter. At least we know we've got the ribbon, uh, the edge connector in place. So please wait. It's disappeared. It now says hello. So time to commit a tape. Good job. I've got some old tapes. Just eject it. And it ejects. Phew. Phew, phew, phew. Pony McGrew, Cuthbert, Dibble and Grub. Plug the HDMI adapter in there.
Right, well I managed to find a, a universal uh, remote control uh, which uh, pretty much uh, controls anything. Uh, I've got several, it took me to three goes to I found one that actually worked with this machine and uh, quickly did a quick test. Uh, so uh, get back to recording and we can put in a uh, test tape uh, which I know works and we can press play on there. In fact it will go straight into play I can switch on my HDMI capture and uh, we should see uh, be rewarded with the opening of a video uh, that I use for testing purposes. Um, I won't play the actual video just in case there's a content match of some kind um, on the video part of it. I doubt there will be. Let's just whiz on a little bit. It's a bit blank at the beginning. There we go. Warning. Uh, so at least it's shown we are playing a video. Uh, okay. That seems to be all right. That's good. Um, and there it is, British Film Institute. So we don't want to uh, uh, run into any copyright rules uh, about having this played. So we'll stop that um, and we'll eject that. We'll put in our other test recording tape. And uh, we have a VHS to a hard disk drive and VHS to DVD, so we could do that. Um, but we also have uh, the ability to play back um, the hard drive. So there it is. So having got playback of hard drive, let's press play. Let's see if we get anything on there. And sure enough, there's obviously something been recorded on the hard disk drive for uh, the customer. So that seems to be okay. Let's pause that just to make sure it is. Oh, I think I know what that is. Uh, so we will ignore that. Um, again, we don't want to have any copyrights on there. And um, we'll just uh, select the DVD. And we'll put in test DVD. One of my favourite films, Aliens. Let's just make sure that that plays okay as well. And it's reading. DVD video. Yep, that's playing okay. So I think we can safely say we are fixed. Now um, there is no. Uh, oh, yes, there is aerial input. So we could. Uh, has it got a DV a digital tuner in it? That's the question. If it's got a digital tuner in it. Um, we can in fact see if it will record well sadly I don't I've managed to find how the whole operating system works but I can't tune any channels I don't what I don't want to do is I don't want to retune this this unit just in case the customer is actually not on the same transmitter as me and if I retune it I lose their favorites um, I lose their you know any timer recordings they may have set uh, which have been stored. Um, so I've tested its played back um, both on all three mechanisms so I'm going to have to rely on the fact that uh, it is going to record uh, because it's playing back fine. So uh, that's pretty much the end of it. Uh, I shall box this up and that will be the uh, uh, end of this video. So thanks very much for watching um, and if you want to whiz on to the end of the end credits and uh, send us a like or um, subscribe or whatever it is you do on YouTube you know uh, but anyway, I hope you've been in entertained by this mammoth job uh, where we've had to weld pa part of the mechanism back together uh, and get it functioning once more. Cheerio for now!